start on a negative vibe if you want to. I would have thought better from you, Chris, but uh, Tom, Tom uh, needs a clear out of his hip that will put him out for the rest of the season. Right. Okay, because you had the you're waiting for that result last week. Yeah. Were there other options, or was this was this the only option? This is the only option. Yeah, he's he's been back down to London to have further extensive X-rays under movement um, with a different consultant, and this is the best thing for him in the in the short term. I know it sounds long term a season, but it's not because he's still a young lad. It's the best thing for in the short term to to ensure that he's able to be more robust moving forward and train and, and progress his game in the way he wants to. So what is what did it actually reveal, the, the scans? What, what is the actual problem? He's just got some wear and tear issues around his socket um, and, and a little bit of bone that needs shaving off and cleaning up. From my understanding, there's three, there's three procedures you can have on, on your hip um, of this nature. One is... This, which is the least, um, what's the word? The least uh, invasive, yeah. The least invasive this is. Then you can have a resurfacing, have it metal, uh, metal resurfacing, then you can have a hip replacement. So this is the, 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 the better of lesser evils, I guess. Uh, we spoke last week about the mental side of this, about dealing with it. I know that Tom goes off and does his own thing but how much is that a factor in, in your thinking about how he's going to handle this no like, honestly like I'm probably more uh, I was more uh, uh, I wouldn't say distraught I was I was more uh, upset than he was like he'd reframed himself in a day he's like this is fine you know apparently Bevan Nod's got an old woman's hip no woman's leg, an old, an old man's thema or something. He's got some like kind of some bone that I didn't, wasn't even aware of that that was <laughs> that showed up as as older than what his years is. But then if you look at Bev's face, he looks about fifty anyway, doesn't he? So I guess there's going to be some other part to him that's that's ancient. And he's like, if he can play with that, if Sam Simmons can play with a a dodgy hip, um, then then I'm going to be fine. Like I, this is. Like literally seen as a as a bump in the road for him, so he was extremely positive. I'm sure there'll be ebbs and flows with that, Chris. You know, over the next four or five months, and I'd hope to be part of that um, journey with him as as he as we get him up back to where he needs to be. But there was there was no chink in the uh, the invincible armor that is Tom Curry. He was just like, right, let's get it done, let's go. And when would he have it done? Has he had yeah, as early as possible. So we're aiming for a week after next. Uh, do you have any others coming back this week uh, who've been on the injury trail? Uh, Flats, Tom O'Flaherty, is coming back. He looks yeah. super sharp today. Uh, you know, Fordy was uh, rested because he only had one day at home uh, after two and a half months away. So he's, he comes back into the fold. Um, Man is man is close, but no cigar this week. What, Nick Schoonert's back. Um, did you expect Russell to play? I know Ollie Lawrence has said he might not be playing. Uh, Finn had his break to go to New York a couple of weeks ago. Would you expect to be 40 against Finn? Yeah, I hope so. Like We want the best of him because it'll bring out the best in us. That's what we're, we're gearing up for. Their best 15, or at least the 15 that have played their best rugby. Um Regardless if the personal changes, the plan will remain the same. We feel they've been well coached and well drilled and have a real, uh, I will not say obvious, but forceful style of play this season. Because, yeah, they were underperforming last year. Johan's come in, got started. You see his work coming to fruition now. First versus second. A lot of people would have said, yeah, probably sale in, in that scenario, but Bath? Possibly not, because of what happened in the last couple of seasons. Has it surprised you? No, I thought they were coming to form at the end of last season. Uh, they're missing out narrowly on a lot of res a lot of good results. You know, towards the back end of games, um, you could see the, the quality of the playing staff that they recruited in. Um, 
And so it was only a matter of time whilst they, they played a few more games and got a bit more of cohesion to to find the quality and they're finding that, aren't they? There's, there's just elements of the game which statistically show how good they are. Most kicks retained, um, most dominant carries and second for most dominant defensive hits behind us. So there's some good matchups there. Great. Look forward to seeing you. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, Chris. Hey, Alex. Will here. I, I'm good. Thanks, Will. How are you getting on? Yeah, good. Sorry if you can hear some quite funky Christmas music. I'm in a random hotel in Paris. So, apologies for Oh, I'll check you out. Um, How come you're over there? Is it a romantic... Sorry? Is it a romantic break, is it? Or... No, no, no. Working. Always working. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I, I just missed the, what you said at the start. Can, I, but I heard you talking about, obviously, Tom's rubbishy news about his... Yeah. Life. Can I just check that it's not quite the full Andy Murray thing, like the resurfacing no. procedure? It? No, it's not that. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you said he's, he's managed to kind of like compartmentalise it, but that's pretty brutal for a bloke who's still so, so young to be out for so long. Like, how do you think he'll cope with it all? Yeah, I think really well. Better than most. He's wired differently than most. Yeah, like, I was surprised at how quickly he turned himself around. It's not old news for him now. I mean, new news for him. It's new news for you, but he's had at least a week to get to grips of what could happen. And this is by no means the worst that could happen. Um, and he's very positive about getting back and getting back in a sales shirt, um, you know, hopefully towards the back end of the season. But if not, then it'll be good to go next. I suppose people might look at the wider thing of like Benel's picked up an injury as well. No man who was carrying a broken hand, I think, during the World Cup. Is it a massive challenge this season after the World Cup for those guys, because they played so much rugby earlier than they usually would do, to keep managing them through the, the campaign, giving them the time off their needs? Or is it just inevitable that some of them are going to, unfortunately, break because they play so much rugby? Yeah, it's a challenge for everyone. It's a challenge for every one of the players coming back in from such an emotional high and a roller coaster of of what it takes to play in a World Cup and be away from family and everything else, they're just the ones that have ended up with collateral damage. Uh, and, you know, Tom's going to have a lot of time off. In that time, whilst he rehabilitates, he's going to be so fresh when he comes back. Man who's had time to freshen up. You probably the, the, the tougher the challenge is managing those guys that haven't come back with injury, like your George Fords who got away last week and I will look after Gus Creevy down the line. He's got a family down in Reading. So they're, they're the tougher challenges because you've got to find time to freshen them up so they're playing at right at the top level and not operating at 89%. But yeah, it's always a challenge and tougher after the big tours, Lions and, and World Cups. Thanks, Alex. I'll let the others go. Thanks, mate. Uh, hey, uh, oh, sorry, hey, I'm talking to you. Grant, fair enough, follow I'll be brief, I'll be brief, Kieran, okay? Uh, just with regard to Tom, yeah. uh, Alex, was hip trouble something on his radar before or is it something that's completely out of the blue now, is it? Yeah. The, the level where it's at at this point in time is new, hence why we've had to send him for specialists. But I th it, this is a, I guess, it hasn't flagged up to this degree until this point in his career. I think there's always been hip stiffness there and um, above average doms, I would say, because he has the ability to push himself beyond what normal people can do, you know, in terms of his loading and his intensity and how he plays the game. So there's always been an element of um, managing like his load always uh, with Tom. Because they'll just empty the empty the tank and go deep, drink deep from the well. Um, and, and this time he just he was doing the same thing, but just not recovering, wasn't recovering, and wasn't been able to do it again and again. And then, and then all of a sudden the red flags are like, well, maybe there's something deeper here. And evidently there has there is. What will his absence do for your title challenge? Uh Jesus, define Tom Curry's influence on the game. It's, it, it's huge, isn't it? Yeah. It's huge, uh, Tom's influence on 
not just like I say like what he does at the weekend, but how he drives the standards in the week and every week. Um, we are so fortunate to have such a strength and depth in the back five. Probably our, our biggest strength and depth, aside from our half-back partnerships and pairings, is, is the back five with both Currys, both Duprees, Ernst Finn Rince, Cobus Visu who can drop back down there, <coughs> Tom Ellis who can drop back down into a back row, but circulates around the back five and Johnny Hill. So we're very lucky that we've we've got all that strength there to uh, to be able to call on, um, even with Tom not being there. And Tom, Tom will be around, obviously, like he's, he's he wants to help, he wants to contribute in a similar fashion that George did when he was injured um, and improve his communication skills and understand how he can contribute without actually doing it through his actions on, on the grass. OK, just to change the topic there, you mentioned Gus Creevy earlier. The, the durability throughout his career... Is <sighs> what, what have you made of him so far since his arrival at the club there post-World Cup? Oh, um, I'm not shy of sharing my affiliation towards the lads that I, I have some relationship with. Um, just the mere fact he calls me amigo is enough. <laughs> it's okay. Here we go. He's brilliant. Like he, he, I did say, he wasn't supposed to come in that first week. Um, I, I did give him that week off, but because we were so short on injuries, um, I had to drag him away from Reading, whilst his wife had uh, solicitor exams in London, and he came up on a plane on Thursday morning to do the team run and just slotted in so easily. And then, um, you know, there's talk of obviously using him and Luke Cowan-Dickey and Tommy Taylor and not just playing them consistently through as a first, second choice because they've got so much experience and we, so we're able to rotate them. And this week, that might come in, it might not come in, Kieran. And when I mentioned this coming down the line, it certainly will happen in the next four weeks because you have to. He's like, uh, I get it, you know, this is... This is not tennis that we're playing. This is a team game, and I trust you. So already I've got that level of trust with, with Gus. Where as long as I'm honest with him, he's he's very much on board with everything we're doing. I, I, I'm I'm just surprised how he, he doesn't get injured. He, 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 I said like what things could derail us. This was just in a coffee. You know, we're getting everything we want at the moment in terms of how we're training and what things could take us away from our aspirations of what you've mentioned, you know, title contention, and we're a long way off that yet, but what things could derail us? And he talked a bit about discipline and maybe people turning up five, five, six minutes late for a gym session. You know, we said there was a few there this morning, which is great, isn't it, for him to see on those standards. And then he said people not training. He said, I don't, you know, I don't agree with people just getting through a week and preserving himself for a weekend. So he, he not only does he play every week, he trains every week. So I, I, I don't know how he, how he quite does it, um, apart from a consistency of application, like he still very much loves the game. Um, he loves contributing in terms of helping the other lads, like he's, how he is with the young lads in the scrummaging session today, like it's never a, a dick measuring, it's never a Machiavellianism with him, it's, it's like he wants to get everyone around him better. Um, and I have to say, like, like, there's all those things that could contribute to his, his mental health and his, and, his, and his drive and his wanting to be there, which is it's generally the first thing that goes, not the body. Like, if you've just had enough of, 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 of putting it in week in, week out, which he clearly hasn't, um, that, that is one thing. But he, he, he's, he's a lot bigger and thicker than what he looks like on camera. Like, he's, he, he, everything about him, like his wrists and his, and his arms and his shoulders... Like he makes the props look quite small when he's up against them, but because he's he's all that big, he, he he looks relatively, relatively small, doesn't he, compared to your Montoya's or whatever? And he's not. He's he's quite a sturdy character, so I, I'd say he's genetically predisposed to last as long as he is as well. Yeah, just finally on that before I leave you go. The fact that he's thirty eight and has been in the game for so long is it, will will that kind of like open the eyes of the younger fellas at your club to go? Well, they, they can see their career be being potentially much longer. That that it isn't a game that finishes say when you come to your thirties or whatever. Else. You're, you know, the guys can't guys can't be exceptions to the rule and keep going on and on like a, bit, a new Jimmy Gobert, so to speak. If they're well managed, yeah, and I think that's probably what we might have over uh, some of the European clubs moving forward is 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 not treating them like a piece of meat. I've been proper care and an infrastructure around them as players from a young age so they're able to have longer lasting careers um, yeah, and, and we probably saw a bit of that 
over the last couple of years, haven't we, with Mike Brown, um, uh, who's the other one, um, Tommy, um, Tommy, who's the Leicester fly half? You know, Jimmy, Jimmy, yeah. Um, Chris Ashton, but less so in the forwards. But yeah, there's there's a, there's a sure sign there that is, if you're robust enough and you look after yourself well enough, then you can you can last a while. It's been great signing for us, like really good signing. Dead chuffed he's, he's on board and on the, on, in the house. Great stuff, look, best luck on Thanks, the Liam. Weekend. Cheers, Liam. Thanks for, cheers, take care. Afternoon, Alex, how are you? Yeah, I'm very well, thank you, yeah. yeah. Um, another question on Tom. Uh, will you be looking to delve into the market considering it is a long-term issue? And I know that you've explained really well in the past how the injury dispensation works considering how good a player Tom is, presumably that opens up quite a bit of space, quite a bit of money to spend, considering, as I think you've explained, that it has to be a similar pay bracket re relative to, to the person who's injured. Um, it, it, yes, we are leaning into the possibility of whether we need cover, like I said, because we've still got a lot of strength there. We do have still a couple of injuries in, in JL who's going to come back in the next few weeks in Tom Ellis who's going to come back so it's if we are looking into someone at the moment we think it'll probably be for short term because we're, we're two injuries away like a concussion and an injury say and it could be happen that easily in one week from playing academy players and that's unfair to them so we're just looking at how we're tracking at the moment seeing what's out there we won't be able to get a replacement for Tom because there's no one like him. But someone who could help us rotate and manage the load over the next six weeks, really. Because then you, I reckon then you can fire in to the end of January. Then after that mid-season break, if you want to call it that, another pre-season, you've got 12 games left, six by way of knockout. So that's just the business end. That's home straight, that for me. So it would really be in the short term between now and the end of January if we needed someone and we weren't tracking so well over the next week or two. Is it is it made a slightly more challenging thing? Because I, I, I think of down the years, both both kind of, well, particularly with Steve Diamond's time, picking up Van Rensburg on loan, Rob and Jean-Luc came on loan. Does the fact that the South African side is now playing in the URC make it slightly more complicated because there are fewer players out there because they usually be on, if they were in the Super Rugby, they'd obviously be during their break at the moment. Does, it, does that reduce the player pool to be able to go? And if you, even if you wanted to sign someone, it reduces that player pool. I, don't, I, I haven't got any experience from how it was. That's a problem. This, this is how it is for me. Um, you can still pick up quite a lot of World Cup jokers in the French market. So there's some of those knocking around. Um, there's the odd club that's probably pushing close to the salary cap. Uh, so you can explore those opportunities. Um, yeah, and then obviously we're, we're having a look in South Africa as well because those lads, um, we know, fit in well here and, and most of their attributes fit well for our game model. Uh, so uh, they're the three areas that we're looking in to see if there's anything that's worth investing in. Reflecting on last Friday's win, I, I think you probably summed up quite well in terms of being frustrated, but also enjoying the fact that it was a win and, and, and we are top of the league. How do you, a few days now out from the game, how do you reflect on it? Do you think there was any subconscious complacency or, or is that unfair on some of the Newcastle youngsters who, who, who really turned up and, and played well and, and, and actually made it, they made it a tougher game for us rather than our players perhaps taking them lightly or is it a combination of the two? Yeah, probably a combination of the two on, on reflection. We, um, it's always easy, isn't it, after you've, you've watched the, the clips back. We certainly weren't at our physical best and I reckon the physical nature of the game is the one thing that relies on emotion more than any other. You know, in attack, it's decision-making, communication, to, to, to make the right option and then be able to execute. Actually, you want to be less emotional for the most part because you end up closing up and snatching at the ball. But in defence, like it, 
if you want to tackle someone, you want to tackle them. And we weren't there at that emotional level where we need to be out there this weekend. So we just addressed that, or the lads did, and they, they got it spot on themselves. Asher, a poker fuzzle, made his premiership debut <coughs> off the bench and I think he sidestepped someone after about 30 seconds of being on and, and looked impressed in the scrum. I mean, he's a young lad, especially for a tight head or a, a, a prop, but my goodness, he looks... A real talent, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it just, I've seen him do things that I haven't seen other 19 year olds do. And, you know, I'm not saying that I've seen every 19 year old out there, but I played with a few. Like, I played with Dave Flatman when he made it as a, as, as a young lad, and he was an exceptional talent then. It's rare that you get them that young that are able to to to, to hold a Brocklebank out. And Brocklebank was there, is their first choice left, Lou said, and a good one. You know, Nick Schoenert's had problems with him in the past, whereas not so much. I sure at the weekend. So there's that. That's his first job, in it, Kieran? Like to scrum. He showed he can do that at that level. Um, we'll have to test him again on another day. But it's just his dynamism. A tight head with fast twitch fibres are rare as teddy bear shit. You just don't get them. And he can scrum and he can sidestep. So, you know, watch this space. We've got to keep him fit for, you know, his career and his longevity. But I'm very excited about him. Yeah. Neither Nick Schoenert nor Simon McIntyre were involved in the match they squad on Friday. Was that resting or are they a few of the players that you were mentioning last week about fatigue-related yeah. kind of niggles? Yeah, yeah. Nick's just got like a bursa on his on his foot and that's just a, a long-term thing that we've got to manage with him. And if I'm honest, we've probably played him through more games than I would have liked. You know, we, want, we needed to kind of shore up the scrum and get our best scrummage in front rows and I say rows because I include the bench and that out there whilst we were waiting for um, some of those senior hookers to come in. So we just had to play him through. And so he was due a rest. He was pretty sore and he wasn't getting through as much in training, what what I'd like him to do. Uh, and Simak uh, had a, a little bit of crick in his neck, um, a bit of a stinger. So he, he wasn't able to scrum in the week. And going back to the Gruss Creevy, like if you don't train for us, you don't play at the weekend barring some exceptions where we're just short of numbers. That, that's pretty, if there's two people who are fit, then it's the guy that trains will play. Are they in contention this week or not? They are in contention, yeah. Um, there have been a few guys that have come back from long-term injuries this season. Ben Curry, Dan Dupree, Cozvi, so Luke Kandiki. How, how have they, I know obviously they're all different, different injuries, different players, but how have they all been in terms of their metrics? How, how are they all... Responding to, to being back, I know some have played more games than others since their return. How have they all been coming off longer term injuries? So far, so good. Touchwood. Um, the odd niggle here or there, but uh, nothing major to report of. And I, I've, I've got to give props to the, the medical team for that because they don't release them until they're able to actually play a game. They don't let them build them back into into game time, you know, because they could come off the bench and end up playing 70 minutes and, and re injure. They're very conscious of when you come back of a long-term injury, more often than not, you get a small one that follows or a little one because your body isn't used to it. So they've been quite deliberate in terms of the loading to make sure that they're in the right spot. To the, you know, almost to the detriment of preparation, like we started quite slow because we weren't able to play them through that Prem Cup. They could only come back, back end of that Prem Cup. And they've been extra careful with Luke, really, really careful with Luke. You know, it's, um, but that shows because he's, he's, he's good to go again this weekend. And there's been no repercussions, so yeah, they've um, they responded really well to to game time. How close is Rafi to a return? Oh yeah, really close. He's still got a button in his in his cheek. Um, they've had to put some like elastic bands to hold his jaw in the right place. They said four weeks, then they said no six, to be sure. Um, he has been training with a mouth guard and these elastic bands and a scrum out on today, uh, albeit, you know, non-contact, semi-contact stuff, um, with a view to it maybe getting his elastic bands taken out uh, and being involved next week or the week after. You spoke about Sam James, you had another good performance on Friday, back in his usual position of 13. You said last week, in regards to him being in a contract year, that um, we, I think your exact quote was, we would like to keep him. Is that is the ball in his court as such in terms of 
it's now up to him as to whether he decides. And are you kind of concerned because obviously he's not seemingly the starting 13 when everyone's fit because Rob seems to be there when George is, is available. And so are you worried that that might lead to him kind of thinking about moving on for guarantees of, of being the first choice at 13? Um, not to the extent where if him and Rob are playing equally as well, I'd pick him because of it. Do you know what I mean? Like that I'm always going to pick on performance for what's best for the team. Um, I, I certainly don't want to lose Sam. He's been an integral part of this place um, forever. And I, just when we seem like we're hitting our straps and we we could be real contenders, if it was to move on for personal reasons, and it would be for a lifestyle change, from what I understand. You know, if it was to move on, this is his last opportunity to get a contract somewhere else to experience the world on the back of rugby, you know, and they're valid reasons. They are really valid reasons. He's got to weigh that up against, you know, maybe to looking back in, in, in four or five or six years' time and, and seeing what he missed out, uh, having created what he's created here. So that's, that's, it is, that's his choice, because I think we'll be competitive in terms of what's in the market by way of salary. So it, it, it will come down to what he wants to do and what Ruby, his wife, wants to do and Arthur, his little kid, um, for a lifestyle choice moving forward. I, 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 I spoke to him the other day and I was just like, look, we need to try and start talking about this now. It wasn't even on his radar because he was just really enjoying it, Kieran. Um, but we have, you have to, you have to plan because he's out of contract next next summer, as you say. Yeah, I was about to say, not, not that you would put time pressure because I think that presumably would be a dangerous game to play to try and put someone under that pressure of you have to make a decision by this point. But considering if he does go, you, you, you then have to think about replacing That's it. him. That's are, it. Are you kind of how conscious are you of that in terms of not putting pressure on him to make a decision by a certain date, but kind of wanting to kind of clarify where he's at sooner rather than later so that it doesn't yeah. drag on for months and months? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly that. Like, it'd be nice to for us to know where our future lied, and I include Sam in that um, by the new year, I'd say, but I haven't put any restraint on it. I said, like, you go back, speak to Ruby, come back to us, get your, get your agent on it. Uh, most of these things should, should, well, I think this year, due to the nature of the season, will get wrapped up by that February break. Yeah. Um, just one final one on Luke. He got injured, obviously, during the Premiership Rugby Cup. What? Yeah. What sort of time scale in terms of a potential rough return date are we looking for him? Luke, Toulouse, Manu, JL, Rafi maybe a week before that. All these guys are going to be uh, back and fit in and around Europe. Thank you, Alex. Cheers, Kieran. Thanks, mate.